Battlefield 2042 has remained incredibly controversial ever since it launched in late 2021, despite DICE's year-long efforts to keep the game alive with remastering maps and even reintroducing the class system recently. I had some friends that said that this game was going to be totally dead within four months. I kind of expected a half-hearted relaunch of the game in about a year or so, and then we also have predictions like this one from the Battlefield subreddit that claims that within four or five months of launch, everyone is going to love 2042 because everyone changes their opinions on Battlefield games as soon as the next shiny thing comes along. It's been a year plus now since launch, so who was actually right? What has been the fate of Battlefield 2042 after a year plus? Let's dive in and take a closer look. Under our control. All right. Oh, I'm dead. Don't want Okay, so back up. Oh, nope. Grenade. Yeah, they, I was getting shot from the left side. Too, from the right side. I've got to kill their whole team to revive you, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks right there, too. I got somebody still. He's still alive. Help. Reloading here. How am I alive? <laughs> There's a battlefield moment for you. <laughs> oh! <laughs> See, we need all chat for moments like that. That was such a great shot. I have to give DICE credit for this. They did not totally abandon the game, despite the awful reviews and the awful community reaction to its launch. A lot actually has changed, but will it be enough? I figured this was a good chance to dive back in having put the game down myself for about six months almost. I was going to be going in blind and checking out a patch that they were really pushing as a big change for the game. The return of the classic Battlefield class system. Kind of. First up though, this video is brought to you by our sponsor, longtime channel partner Apex Gaming PCs. The video you're watching here was both recorded and edited here on my Apex Gaming PC. And if you want to upgrade your PC with a nice pre-built where you don't have to worry about parts hunting, make sure you guys check out my storefront over there on the Apex website where there's three Ranger Dave pre-approved configurations to pick from, something for every budget. And if you use coupon code Ranger Dave, you can save up to 250 bucks off of your total purchase price. Also, big news for international customers, they are shipping Apex PCs internationally now and for the time being, they're also waiving all shipping fees on international orders outside of the US, and they're gonna pay your import taxes for each purchase that you might get from your local government. That is a pretty awesome bargain right there, so make sure you guys click that link at the top of the description and check out Apex Gaming PCs. To start things off, let's focus on the improvements over the last year, especially again, having not played for about six months straight. The first thing you're going to notice is far, far better client FPS and performance. That's the overall performance on your local machine, at least for me here on PC. I am getting far higher frame rates than I ever had before, even though I'm now running the game at 4K. That's especially impressive given that the newer maps also look much, much better than the original ones. While there are only two new maps, they are again excellent looking. And a lot of the original launch maps, I think the majority of them at this point, have gotten a pretty thorough retouching. All of the updates for the original maps have gone further than I expected, but it's just hard to get excited about improving a mediocre or terrible map to be just 
pretty okay or pretty good versus, you know, maybe getting some more new maps, fully new maps over the course of the last year, besides just those two. While almost all of the game's maps are improved, I still don't see any of them as a Battlefield map classic that you would see players begging to have return in a future Battlefield game. None of them stand out to me <laughs> really at all. And that's a shame. Improvements, just hard to get excited about them. Hopping into my first rounds, I also found that the input for the game was far, far better. There was less mouse delay, less keyboard delay, and everything just felt more responsive. Part of that probably was the increased frame rate. Part of it was probably also a increase in server performance, but I also know that DICE has been working on improving input for both controllers and mouse and keyboard. So although I'm not playing on console, from what I'm hearing from other players, it is much better on consoles as well. Big thumbs up for accurate input on a very fast paced FPS game, but I'm again struggling to get excited about that because you're going, oh man, why was it launched like this and why did it take so long to get it so right? The Frostbite engine must be really rough to work with sometimes. The final thing that I noticed that was a big positive for me was the overall thematic treatment of the game has come a long way since its mixed messaging at launch with those cringy voice lines. No action hero BS. We do this smart. Don't be sad. Hey, look how mute these guys are now. It's like awkward still. Oh, uh, the characters aren't loading on my screen. <laughs> well, that's, that's definitely awkward. Yeah, it is awkward that they don't say anything right now. <laughs> but it's just a dumb fix, right? Like, it's like... <laughs> I'll take it over the quips from before, but it's still awkward because you remember that they used to talk. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Angel does it again. <laughs> Uh, so that's dumb. my nightmares. <laughs> Don't be sad. <laughs> the theme was all over the place for this game at launch, especially when you add in the game's pre-launch cinematics. Over the last year, things like updated voice lines and grittier and more realistic updated character visuals, as well as a lot of the new cosmetics have all come together to make a much grimmer picture for the game that I think was a lot more in line with what I was expecting out of it for a future climate change disaster kind of day after tomorrow, if you guys have seen that movie, uh, theme, just a really grim war over resources. You can just really tell that the game has a lot more focused theme over this last year of content. Well, that's our list of pros. Well, <laughs> mostly pros. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, the classes patch, and the fact that we're still looking at named specialist characters here in the game. As you can clearly see here, the specialists are most certainly still in the game. They've just been reorganized into classes. You have Assault, Engineer, Support, and Recon. Support is kind of the combination of both Medic and traditional Battlefield support players which focus on ammo resupplies. Not a combination I've been a fan of in previous games, but not one that is unheard of for the class system. Each game has had its own variation of it, so that's kind of all right. Engineers are anti-tank, as you would expect, anti-vehicle, I guess, generally. Recon isn't just snipers. They also focus on counter intel and gadgets, uh, electronic warfare gadgets like the spotting tugs here, as well as the tracer dart, which was added in this last batch. And of course, you have assault, which is your basic frontline fighter. The awkward thing here is, as you can see, the specialists still exist. They have been kind of shoehorned in a pretty okay way into these individual class roles. But you can still pick any weapon for any class. For Mackie here, I can grab one of the sniper rifles if I really want to. There's no real penalty for doing so. What you don't get is just the perk that goes along with using your correct class weapons. For assault rifles, if you use an assault rifle with your assault class, you get three extra magazines. It's a pretty good incentive, but again, there's no real disincentive for using other weapons. None of the weapons are actually fully class locked. Engineers have increased accuracy while crouched or prone, and they have a focus on LMGs, which is an odd choice because traditionally the engineers have used SMGs, but in 2042 now, SMGs are for support players. If you use an SMG with your support player, you get a faster draw time. Not a great perk, but pretty good if you're fighting up close. 
And then we have Recon, which has probably the closest thing to class locked weapons because it gives you immediate and constant steady scopes. So using scopes with other classes is possible, but you are going to get way more drift than the actual Recon class. Again, I just think that the specialists are a boat anchor for this game. I understand that you can't just remove a core gameplay element, especially when you sold cosmetics and season passes and all this stuff where specialists were a core tenant of the whole game design. You can't just pull that from the game. But I don't think that Battlefield 2042 will ever reach its possible potential as long as the specialists remain and they are going to remain. That basically sums up the class system right there, guys. It's a decent, if half-hearted attempt to shoehorn the class system into a game that was not designed for it. The game is better now that it is here, but it just never will be as good as it could have been if specialists were just never a thing. One final note on specialists and their overall balance is that I still think some of the gadgets and options for the specialist are going to be picked way more often than others. Options like Boris's turret or Liz's instant gib anti-aircraft rocket are going to be picked way more than anything else than things like a deployable shield. Depending on how much life cycle this game has left in it too, you're going to run into the issue of the more specialists you add, they're going to have to have their own unique gadgets and abilities, the harder and harder the game is going to be to balance. Besides bringing a unwanted special hero character element to the Battlefield franchise that no one asked for and no one wanted, it is still very hard to read friendly versus enemy specialist in the game when they all look exactly the same. And it's interesting to me because previous Battlefield games would use the same skin for the different classes, but there was a unique skin for each faction. The US engineer did not have the exact same uniform as the Russian engineer in Battlefield 3. The ability to read an enemy character at distance based on their uniform and silhouette is incredibly important, and DICE themselves argued against even having player cosmetics for a long time because they were so focused on our gameplay flow is dependent on players recognizing enemy characters and which class they are at distance, and they just threw all that game design away in Battlefield 2042 to shoehorn the specialist into the game, perhaps hoping that they would be able to sell a ton of battle passes and cosmetics to unlock new stuff for them and new characters. That's all I can figure. No one asked for this, and it doesn't work well at all as a system. We found ourselves shooting our own teammates constantly playing these matches in Battlefield 2042 for this video. Putting specialists aside, let's also talk about the overall server performance and tick rate. While the game client might be running better on your individual console or PC, the servers do appear to be struggling pretty often especially in those high player count servers with 128 players. From what I've heard, the game is supposed to have a 45 hertz tick rate, which is actually higher than I thought it might be given that increased player count, but it does not feel like it. If it's 45 hertz, it is not constant and the game must have significant server performance dips because at least a couple times around, I will get a server performance warning or will notice a vehicle stuttering or chugging or someone will kill me in one frame with no time for me to respond at all, or I will kill someone else in what feels like just one frame way too fast. The performance is very unpredictable still on the server side. Adding to that issue is the fact that just the game design is at a breathless pace as far as the pacing goes. Ever since Battlefield 3, the game has increased its gameplay speed more and more, I think, to keep up with the general shooter market, looking at you, Call of Duty. I'm not expecting Battlefield 2's gameplay pace to be remade over and over again, and I'm not expecting a squad gameplay pace out of Battlefield, but the game is just so hectic here in Battlefield 2042 that, again, I think breathless is the only way that I can describe it. It can be fun for short periods of time, but Less and less often do I find options for long flanks and sneaky back caps, and more and more often it's just looking at whatever the swarm is on the map and joining into the chaos. And that's not even in breakthrough mode, I'm talking about my games on Conquest here. 
The game also has a really poor map rotation and rematching system. After every round, the lobby is thrown to the wind and the matchmaking system begins again. There's no sense of community. You can't stick with a lobby and, you know, come back from a loss from last round and beat them next time. It's just gone. Everyone's gone again. You're just back on the matchmaking screen and odds are you might even get the same map like four times in a row. Or is that just my luck? Because that is certainly how it seemed playing again. And speaking of a lack of community, as I mentioned there in the intro, there is still no way to communicate with the enemy team. Sure, you can see their scoreboard, but you can't talk to them, chat with them, uh, VoIP them, anything at all. So when you share a cool cross team battlefield moment, you know, you counter snipe somebody in a tower and get a crazy headshot, or as happened to me, my chopper gets absolutely nailed across the map. You can't be like, holy crap, that was amazing. It's just you and your team fighting silently against the enemy. It just feels like you're playing bots, and maybe that's why they removed the all chat, so you can't tell when those bots start filling out your lobby. My final remaining bone to pick with Battlefield 2042 after a full year is the HUD has really gotten no major improvements that I could find at all since maybe two months after the game came out. We got an updated scoreboard, sure, but this HUD is still so busy. Your user interface, your heads up display, whatever you want to call it, there is so much in your face and their color scheme that they chose is so bright and high contrast. It's beyond obnoxious. My entire squad complained multiple times about the amount of notifications and HUD stuff going on detracting from focusing on the gameplay constantly. And I'm really surprised to see that the HUD still looks like that. Compare it here to the HUD in Hunt Showdown. Yes, it's a totally different game, but just look how stripped down it is. A lot of it is contextual, it fades out when it's not being used, and you're just able to enjoy the game's visuals and the gameplay without stuff bombarding you all over the screen. Part of the issue with this cluttered heads-up display is the fact that all of the specialists are the same for all factions. The game is really leaning heavily on the HUD to show you who is a teammate and who is not. So that's Battlefield 2042 after a full year. A lot of improvements, and we actually had a lot of fun recording this video. We played for three plus hours, but I just don't feel the urge to go back and play more all the time like I have in previous Battlefield games. I don't know if it's the sum of its parts right now or just the fact that it took so long to get here, but I just find it hard overall to get super excited about hopping in and playing this game. And part of it too is that only a few members of my traditional Battlefield squad even still have the game installed. I think it's two or three of us now total that still have it installed. There are just too many good games out there right now for a bad game to take a year to get pretty good or okay. So, after all those predictions at the start of the video, who was actually right? I don't think my friends that said that the game was going to be completely dead ended up correct. The game is still getting regular patches and regular season updates, but they were kind of right in that the player count is kind of dead. Seven to 8,000 players on Steam each night is not great for a AAA title. And for the guy on Reddit who thought that everyone was just going to fall in love with the game on their own after a few months, well that has definitely not happened, even after the full year of effort that DICE has put into improvements. And then we had my prediction where I thought that the game might get a full relaunch at one point. I don't see that happening, but I would consider the update with the class system to be kind of a soft rebranding, if not a relaunch. They were really pushing this patch as uh, big game changer, no pun intended, and it kind of is, but also kind of isn't, so I guess no one was really right. The game is still here, still getting updates, but yeah, overall reception is just kind of lukewarm. And I'm curious, do you guys think that we're going to get a new Battlefield game at the end of this year, or maybe it'll wait another year or two for this game to continue getting updates? What do you guys think? I'm starting to think that they might try and really double down on 2042 here and keep the updates coming for another year or two. We'll see how it goes. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.